Traditional application security testing catches coding vulnerabilities, but what about flaws in how your application actually behaves? Business logic vulnerabilities are among the most damaging security gaps, and they are notoriously difficult to detect with standard tools. Stackhawk, known for its API security platform, is now addressing this challenge head on by adding business logic testing to its AppSec menu. In this episode of Secure by Design, we have with us once again Scott Gerlach, Chief Security Officer and co founder at Stackhawk, to walk us through this expansion and what it means for development teams. Scott, it's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, great to see you, Swadmo. Great to be here. It's my pleasure. Uh, let's talk about business logic testing for developers and security teams who may not be familiar. Can you break down what business logic te testing actually is and how is it different from traditional application security testing and why does it matter? So they're like three questions bundled together. Sure. <laughs> Just get them all, all together at the same time. Yeah, so business logic testing, really important, especially in the world of APIs where it's less easy to see what happens uh, in the application flow. So business logic testing has been around for a long time. You know, traditionally you think of it as something like, hey, I want to put a item in the cart and I'm going to apply 59 coupons so that you have to send me the item and hopefully a refund. Uh, that's essentially kind of business logic testing. And that's a thing that's been around for a long time. But in API land, there's a lot of differences to what happens there. That same scenario can still happen. So that's why it's important to make sure that your application has some kind of business logic testing, uh, you know, before it gets to production. But the thing that's happening is that historically has been a very brain person activity where a security person or a developer had to be very aware of how the ap application worked what the business context rules were around that application so that you could test to make sure that we're staying within that context. That is becoming harder and harder and harder, especially with the explosion of code being generated by LLMs and people's familiarity with what's going on in that code. So being able to automatically test it in a fashion that makes sense is a, a thing that we're really excited to begin launching and working on and and providing to not only developer teams so that they can test their applications, but also the security teams so that they can also test some of this business logic uh, problems that exist in these APIs and applications. I've been covering Stackhawk for a very long time, and you folks have been primarily known as an API security company. What drove the decision to expand into business logic testing now? Business logic testing, as I mentioned, has been a desire of us uh, to be able to work on for a long, long time. And it just wasn't kind of doable or scalable in a fashion that made sense, right? It was, again, very human interaction, uh, very manual process. But with AI and the advancements that AI has helped provide into our dynamic testing engine, uh, we get a lot of really awesome, power, powerful features that go into that. So one being able to create API specs, open API specs from code, that's AI powered. That alleviates a big, big problem in the market where people just don't have specs. So it's really hard to test. So get rid of that. Two, be able to analyze those specs and understand how the business intended them to be used. So once you have that spec created, being able to look at it and go, ah, I see the flow that is intended for this API, um, and how it's supposed to work and then be able to exercise it that way. So be able to exercise it in a way that is register an account, get an account ID, use the account ID in the next subsequent request. So not only uh, traversing the API in the way that it was intended, but capturing the data that it's returning to you during that entire time to be able to say, okay, I can get deeper and more functionality in this API while I'm testing it. And then uh, being able to use that as the basis for how do we test to make sure that uh, this business logic is working the right way? Or how do we check some of the more basic business logic problems, which are kind of authorization authorization checks. So 
BIFLA, my favorite acronym, BIFLA, uh, broken function level authorization, being able to use multiple users to test and make sure, you know, uh, user A can't change user B's password or um, company C can't see company D's data. Uh, those are authorization type checks and they are very, very much business logic. Uh, and that is the the first part of what we've launched here. Um, being able to use multiple users to test through the API, being able to see those authorization checks that are that should be happening that we can detect and we can alert um, security teams and engineering teams on, and then build the functionality later for even smarter business logic detection so that people don't have to tell you what the rules are, and then we can uh, provide alerts on even more and deeper interesting things. As you already said, you had that ambition, but we are also seeing a lot of other uh, vendors who are also moving into this space. SEMGRIP recently announced its business logic testing capability as well. Uh, can you talk about in general, what exactly is driving this surge of interest across the security industry right now? Yeah, I think in general, the interest has always been there. The desire to provide this functionality uh, in a pretty scalable fashion has been something the security uh, vendors have done for a long time. I think the power of AI is what's really helping a ton of vendors get that information to customers. Um, and, you know, I think one of the special things about what Stackhawk does is it's really kind of hard to see these business logic problems uh, arise in just written code. Uh, and especially in a land where more and more and more and more and more code is being written. But the behavior of the application is maybe more important than, you know, kind of the words that are written to be the application. So being able to say functionally, when we run this application, it has problems and we can confirm that there are problems or not uh, is really, really important. And that's um, an interesting thing that's happening as well, especially with some of the AI tools is their probabilistic outcomes of like, I always like to mention, you know, it is broken, but it isn't broken. It is broken, but it isn't broken. Depending on how the AI feels that day uh, is not a super awesome outcome, but more deterministic using that probabilistic, uh, intelligent, creative part of the AI to understand the application or the API. And then that deterministic, it is broken, it is broken, and it's fixed. Now it is not broken. That's a really, really key piece of what I think really good business logic testing actually provides for uh, for security teams. Thank you so much. Now, as we are discussing, a lot of players are entering this field. How does Stack Hawk's approach to business logic testing differ from what competitors are offering? What's what makes your implementation so unique? Yeah, I think the whole entire Stack Hawk philosophy and ethos of being able to test. Uh, your APIs and applications before you get them into production. You can also test them in production, but before they get there, before they have production traffic on them and make sure that they ha don't have security problems before you put them in production is the differentiator. Uh, whereas a lot of other kind of to put them into production, you have to let them see traffic. You kind of have to let them get attacked before you can get to that point of, oh, there's a problem in here. Uh, and understand that problem now you kind of be you're kind of in scramble mode to try to figure out figure out where that lives in code who's working on that code who can fix the problem all those fun things that happen with uh, detection and response uh, versus being able to integrate that testing as part of the application build or part of the ci cd pipeline the application life cycle uh, and test before you get out there just have confidence that you're not putting insecure software on the on the internet. Can you talk about what are the most common types of business logic vulnerabilities you are seeing in production environments, and what kind of risk do you do you think they pose to enterprise? And also, since you mentioned AI, actually here, almost every discussion is about AI, Gen AI, LLMs. Uh, is AI making things worse or is it making things better? I like to think of AI as like this. It's a uh, scary on this one hand where it, you can produce a lot of code that you're kind of unfamiliar with. We already had these CI CD systems that allowed us to get that code into production really quickly. So that's scary, but it's also crazy 
uh, opportunistic for security teams to be able to do things that were you know, almost impossible before at kind of a large, uh, large scale. So the ability for security teams to take their, you know, generally relatively small team. We always talk about the one security person for a hundred developers ratio. If the developers are eight X or 10 X more productive, that one security team member has now got 800, 10, a thousand different developers, uh, that they're trying to help out. And if they don't work on how to increase their productivity, their knowledge, their capability and ability to help mitigate and manage risk in the organization, their life is hard. Um, so I think that's the really exciting part about AI. Like, it, yes, it's scary, but the ability to do things that were impossible before, like keep a, keep a running list of what code repositories are turning into. Like how are they impacting your attack surface? That's a thing that people used to do and took them a year to write down in a spreadsheet. And now that's stuff that you can do in 15 minutes and do continuously. And it's not even a whole person. So that's super exciting. And the, to your question about what kind of uh, business logic flaws, if you look at, there's a recent OWASP report that said, um, recently, most uh, 35% of all API breaches were authorization related. So that tenancy filter or user A, user B kind of uh, problem accounted for 35% of API kind of attacks. Uh, I believe that's over the last year. So that's kind of a lot uh, of uh, a lot of attacks in that kind of authorization layer where you know, the code was written fine. The, there was no SQL injection. There was no command injection. There was no, you know, none of that, none of that typical, um, injection type vulnerability existed in there, but really it was just using the API as it was, as it behaves to exfiltrate data. So it's it's still on the rise the authorization type problems and it's it's more fun to catch those on the rise than it is to oh no there's a tsunami of authorization problems and now i've got to play catch up if you look at you know security teams developers CISOs, uh just just look at practitioners from a practical standpoint how does business logic testing integrate into existing development workforce? Uh, what does adoption look like from teams already using Stackhawk? Business logic testing is just brand new launched. We've had a, a bunch of customers in kind of alpha beta stages using the, the new smart crawl plan and the new business logic testing alerts. Uh, we've gotten really great feedback so far. That particular brand of testing takes a little bit more of an integrated environment. So you've got to have more um, real-ish data. So in sort of a, a test acceptance uh, environment or a place where you've got more realistic data than where typically Stackhawk runs, which is, you know, as I'm building an application in my IDE, I can put that into run or debug mode and I can test there. This is more... Uh, UAT kind of environment where there's more data um, actually is a little bit, it's faster than uh, what a normal business logic test would be, but it's a little bit slower than the typical Stackhawk test. But the new smart crawl plan that goes into that actually makes the entire test suite much better across the Stackhawk ecosystem. So People are using it right there, right about the user acceptance testing, depending on your environment, um, where they're doing that kind of stuff before they get to production. So test in CI, test in UAT, test in staging, and then get it into prod and you could test it there as well. How do you see business logic testing evolve as applications are becoming more and more API driven, they should live in the API driven world and more AI is being used, more AI assisted code is being generated, uh, developers are relying more on uh, AI, and as you rightly said, it's being used on both sides, good uh, guys and bad guys. The AI implications of what's happening in development, again, very exciting. Uh, less knowledge about what code is being written, and also going to be pretty correct. So 
when when AI assisted coding assistance, AI coding assistance it's first launched, we saw a uh, influx of vulnerable code that those AI assistants were writing. That's pretty much kind of leveled off right now. So if you take AI written code and a human written code, you're probably going to find the same amount of security vulnerabilities in that written code from a SAS perspective or an SCA perspective. And that's why it really takes uh, the, the beneficial part of testing how the application is behaving is so important. If you have the same amount of uh, vulnerabilities being created by coding assistants and humans, and coding assistants can create infinitely more code, looking at all of those alerts kind of in an unintelligent sort of fashion is going to be detrimental to what you actually get done, what you understand about risk, how you're managing that risk versus testing what's running and testing how the behavior of the application shows up will help you um, narrow down what you actually need to be fixing, especially in a, in a world where you're creating all this code and some of it's getting to production and some of it's not getting to production, some of it's handling sensitive data, some of it's not. Being able to say this production thing uh, that is handling sensitive data and has business logic flaws or a SQL injection flaw, that is that is where I should be spending my time, not kind of sorting through all these SAST alerts that may or may not be um, uh, exploitable. Hey, Scott, thanks for joining me and sharing these insights on business logic testing and how Stackhawk is addressing this critical security gap. It is clear that as APIs become more complex, Security testing needs to evolve beyond traditional vulnerability scanning and Skyhawk is doing exactly that. Thanks for your time today and I look forward to chat with you again. Yeah, awesome. Always great to be here, Swabno. Thank you for having us. And for those watching, if your teams are building APIs and you are concerned about business logic vulnerabilities, make sure to check out Stackhawk and its expanded AppSec platform. And don't forget to subscribe to TFR like this video and share it with your team. Thanks for watching.